We're moving up in the world a bit and are getting our first taste of departing from a Class Charlie airport. This is Santa Barbara, California. Notice the two concentric rings around the airport that make up the Class C airspace. From the ground at a Class D airport, we saw that all we need to do is contact ground and tell them our direction of flight. Here at Santa Barbara, we're going to be introduced to a type of control called clearance delivery. First, let's start as we always do on a departure by grabbing the latest weather. The ATIS frequency is 132.65, so we'll put that on our COM2, flip it active, and hit both on the audio panel. Santa Barbara Municipal Airport, ATIS Information Lima, 1653 Zulu, wind 140 at 6, visibility 7, sky condition, clear, temperature 14, 2.11. Altimeter 3003. Arriving and departing runway 7, 15 left, 15 right. Visual approaches in use. VFR departures contact clearance delivery. It is on course heading, altitude, and if flight following is requested. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information Lima. Okay, so in addition to the weather, notice that the recording says to contact clearance delivery with both our route of flight and altitude, and if we want flight following. Clearance delivery will issue us what's called a VFR clearance. Remember that in order to operate in Class C airspace, we need our Mode C transponder, so they'll be issuing us a squat code, just like on flight following. They'll take information about our flight, call sign and aircraft type, route and altitude, destination if applicable, and create a flight strip. The squat code that they assign us will be associated with this information so they can pass our information along to ground, tower, and departure, ensuring our smooth flow through and out of the Charlie airspace. ATC clearances contain several items which are given out in a specific order. To keep track of these items, we'll use an acronym, CRAFT, which stands for Clearance Limit. We don't need a clearance to operate in Class C airspace, so they'll likely omit any mention of this. R stands for Root. ATC will assign us a heading or route based on where they want us to go to separate from other aircraft in the area. It might be runway heading, it might be to a visual landmark like following a highway, or it might be a specific heading. A stands for altitude, if they want us at a certain altitude or to stay below or above one. F is for frequency. We'll need to be in touch with departure control. After we've taken off, Tower will instruct us to contact Santa Barbara Departure, and the frequency thereon will be provided to us in our clearance. Finally, T is transponder. This is the transponder code will be assigned. As you can imagine, these clearances can be a mouthful and we'll need to read them back to the controller. So writing them down and having this acronym to organize the elements will be very helpful. Okay, let's get ready to call up clearance delivery. The frequency can be found at the top of the airport diagram for Santa Barbara. It can also be found on the airport's page in the chart supplement. Like ground control, it won't be listed on the VFR sectional chart. So we'll dial 132.9 into COM1 and flip it active. Let's have ground on standby on 121.7 as they'll be our next contact after clearance delivery. Now let's organize what we want to say to them. We'll start with who we're talking to, Santa Barbara Clearance, who we are, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. We'll also add that we're a Cessna 152 so as not to confuse with a Skyhawk or something else. We can skip where we are. Clearance delivery doesn't care where we are because they won't be issuing us any movement instructions the way ground or tower will. Finally, what do we want? We need to give them a route of flight and altitude, as the ATIS recording said. Let's say we want to fly to Burbank, another Class C airport. We'll plan 5,500 as our cruise for the eastbound flight. It's also going to be important that we mention that we're a VFR flight so the controller doesn't try to find an IFR flight plan for us. So these are the elements for communication to clearance delivery. Let's have the craft scratch pad ready to go so we can write down and organize the clearance we receive. Santa Barbara Clearance, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango is a Cessna 152. Request VFR departure to Burbank at 5,500. No flight following requested. 518 Foxtrot Tango, Santa Barbara Clearance. On departure flight runway heading, maintain VFR at or below 1,500. Departure frequency 120.55, squawk 1734. What a mouthful. Hopefully it's clear now that writing this down and using the CRAFT acronym is hugely helpful. Let's read back all the items on the clearance. Maintain runway heading on departure at or below 1,500. Departure frequency 120.55, squawk 1734. Hey, Foxtrot Tango, read back. 
If we got everything correct, we'll hear read back correct. If not, the controller will let us know what we missed and we'll need to read it back again. At this point, we can set our squawk 1734 into the transponder. We'll also want to turn on altitude mode as required in Class C airspace. Let's flip over to ground. The next few steps in our departure will be very similar to what we've seen at a Class D. After flipping over, we can put tower into our COM1 standby. They're on 119.7. For the contact with ground, let's organize what we want to say. Who we're talking to is Santa Barbara Ground. Who we are is Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. Where we are is over in the northeast corner of the field, the GA parking. What we want is to taxi for VFR departure, with information Lima. We don't need to tell them our direction of flight like we would for ground at Class D because that's been passed on by clearance delivery. Before we contact ground, let's try to anticipate the instructions we'll get. The active runways, according to the ATIS, are 7, 15 left, and 15 right. The closest of these runways to us is 15 left, and it's 4,100 feet is more than enough that we need to take off. So if we're assigned 15 left, we'll be instructed to taxi there via Charlie. Santa Barbara Ground says the 518 Foxtrot Tango is at the GA ramp. Request taxi for VFR departure with Lima. There are five and eight Foxtrot Tango, Santa Barbara Ground, runway 15 left, taxi via Charlie. Runway 15 left via Charlie, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. So as planned, we get 15 left via Charlie. We start out and we'll taxi that way. When we reach the hold short line for 15 left, we can switch over to tower. We could pull off to the side to do a run up and pre takeoff checklist if other aircraft were coming behind us. With tower active, we can now put our assigned departure frequency into standby. Tower is gonna hand us off very soon after departing and they may not even give us the frequency as you might get in a normal handoff, so we should have it on standby now. An extra professional move right now would be to load some destination comms into our COM2. Let's put the ATIS frequency for Burbank, 134.5 and flip it active. We can also put the ground frequency for Burbank on standby, 123.9. Okay, our comms are set up. Let's brief our departure. Our VFR clearance has us maintaining runway heading and maintaining at or below 1,500, so we'll plan that until instructed otherwise later. Our on course heading is about due east, so from runway heading of about 150, we'll plan a left turn out when able. The call to tower is similar to what we do at a Class D. Santa Barbara Tower, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, short of 15 left, ready for departure. We say ready for departure. We shouldn't say the word takeoff until actually reading back our takeoff clearance. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, Santa Barbara Tower, runway 15 left, clear for takeoff. Runway 15 left, clear for takeoff, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. And notice the order of these things. Both we and the tower said the most important part, clear for takeoff, last. As we take off and climb out, we're maintaining runway heading. Somewhere around the departure end of the runway, we'll get our handoff. Our 518 Foxtrot Tango, contact departure. See you later. Over to departure, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. So we flip over. Notice they didn't give us the frequency as we mentioned they might not. Contacting departure, remember that this is Tracon. They're sitting in a windowless control room and can't see us. They'll need to radar identify us. We'll need to give them the altitude we're currently at and where we're climbing to. Santa Barbara Departure, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, 700, climbing 1,500 on runway heading. 518 Foxtrot Tango, Santa Barbara Departure, cancel out the restriction, resume navigation. Climbing 5,500, turning eastbound, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. We could have just read back the cancellation of altitude restriction and instruction to resume on navigation, but we'll give some extra info on our intentions. Cancel altitude restrictions means we're no longer bound by the at or below 1,500 from the clearance and can climb higher. Resume on navigation means we're not bound by the previously assigned vector, in this case runway heading, and can now fly our chosen route, which as we've informed ATC is eastbound. Only hearing these two phrases, cancel altitude restrictions and resume on navigation, allows us to do both a higher climb and a turn to the left. Hearing one only permits us to do one of these things. They're separate instructions. Also, notice the controller didn't say radar contact. Radar contact means that not only do they identify us on their radar scope, but they're also providing us radar services. We haven't requested flight following, therefore we're not getting those services. 
So after we level off at 5,500, we've climbed above and left the lateral boundaries of the Class C airspace. Departure will tell us to change frequencies. Since we're not getting flight following, there's no handoff, just an approval to change frequencies in Squawk VFR. Squawk VFR, frequency change approved, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. So we'll enter 1200 into the transponder and continue on the cruise portion of our flight. The next video will deal with entering and landing at a Class C airport, our destination, Burbank. We've all been talking since we were babies, but talking on the radio makes us feel like we don't know any words whatsoever. Flight Insight VFR Communications course is going to take you step by step through every single aspect of communications, from speaking on a CTAF with other aircraft at a non-towered airport, to talking to tower and approach control, all the way up through talking to the big boys at the international airports and the approach that monitors them. Check out the course we've created in partnership with Pilot Edge and head over to flight-insight.com comms today.